I'm Erin Earth. Welcome to my channel. And if you would like to get notifications that I have uploaded new content, then please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to read today from my book, Kundalini Yoga Home Practice. And I'm going to read the very last portion of the book, which is called Functions of Mind. Let us review the basic functions of mind that disrupt meditation according to Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. These functions are memory, so remembering things, imagining, so imagining stuff or visualizing things, correct perception, incorrect perception, so perceiving anything correctly or incorrectly, and sleep. Memory, imagination, incorrect perception, correct perception, and sleep are the five functions of mind that disrupt meditation, according to Patanjali. The mind usually has free reign to perform these functions at its whim and fancy. The mind will resist meditation because it's not used to it and interprets the event as dull or boring. It is natural for the mind to attempt to carry on its usual routines. With consistent practice, though, the mind gets used to quiet time and a new routine is established. Meditation begins by bringing the body into a preferred meditation posture. I recommend sitting up for meditation, either in a chair with a back and a comfortable seat or on the floor. It is important that your back has support when you're meditating. Your hips may need extra support as well in the form of a cushion or rolled up fabric placed under one or both knees when sitting in easy pose. This cross-legged position is called easy pose. You may prefer head support too. In that case, put the chair against the wall so that your head can just barely lean back and rest against the wall. A small thin pillow placed between your head and the wall may bring the head into just the right alignment. If your bed is pushed flush against a wall, sitting on the bed with your back against the wall may be an option. Use a pillow to support the lower back. A cushion on the floor with your back to the wall is another option. Always support the lower back. I prefer a chair with a supportive back, comfortable but firm seat, and room to cross my legs. Use whatever is right for you. Try out different ways of sitting until you find the least distracting one. For some, sitting up to meditate may not be an option. In this case, choose another position such as laying down flat on your back on a designated area on the floor. Lay down on a mat or blanket. If you must lie on your back, stay alert. It will be an extra challenge not to fall into sleep. This is why it is recommended to sit up whenever possible. At the onset of meditation, chant a mantra or a prayer, or repeat the sound OM a few times. You could use a bell, chime, a singing bowl, or gong to create an attention-attracting tone. How to Om. With awareness in the center of the head, take a full breath in. Use the entirety of the exhale. Open up your mouth and make the sound Om. First, the mouth is open and ah sound is made. Ah. That's the first portion of your om. As the om progresses, the lips slowly close around the sound until they are completely closed. The sound continues through the closed lips until the very end of the breath. You may notice that the voice cracks a little at the very end. The sound begins with ah, then transitions into oh. Finally, the lips close and an mm 
sound is made all the way to the end of the breath. Another deep breath is taken in and OM sound can be made again on the exhale. A vibration can be felt throughout the body and most distinctly in the head and inner ears during the resounding mm, M sound. For some, OM recitation will help to establish connection to the higher concentration force called Nod. And I just did a recent video on Nod sound where I played the Tibetan singing bowl. So I'm going to skip that little portion of the book. Patanjali also recommends meditative linkage to higher persons or realities. Patanjali recommends linkage during meditation to higher persons, meaning deities, or realities, which means environments or energies, vibrations. This option is also productive and powerful. We strive to link our consciousness to a source of heightened awareness, pulling ourselves out of the usual muck of the mind. As we make progress, confidence builds. Eventually, a necessary awareness within will emerge, making it possible to monitor meditation and to help us catch the mind in the act of stealing consciousness through thinking imagining and remembering stuff, remember the functions of the mind. This is how we make advancement in yoga, by catching the mind in the act, disciplining it and bringing it back to OM, bringing it back to the head center. Once in meditation, here we are, continue focusing attention in the center of the head. Sense the convergence of consciousness in this central space. Keep bringing consciousness deeper into itself. This is the location of the observing self. We focus on this self during meditation, the bare self, what Patanjali calls Swarupa in the Yoga Sutras. The challenge is that the core self, or Swarupa, or Atma, must be separated from the mental equipment it is accustomed to using for acquiring information about the external world. Even if the core self enjoys time away from the mental tools, the mental tools do not like time away from the core self. Thoughts do not have power without the submission of the observing self. They will struggle for their survival you may find that it is very difficult to pull yourself out of your tendency to think. You may find that the thinking is just too powerful and that you do not feel like you when you are not thinking. Try to remember that it really isn't you that is thinking your so-called thoughts. Much of what happens in the mind is cognitive or instinctual. Just as the foot is designed by nature for walking, the mind is designed by nature to think and feel. This means it is not always you, the real you, that is thinking. It is not always you that chooses to remember this and that, or to imagine this and that. It is the compulsive design, the nature of the mind itself that does this. Some days it may seem that the mind does not want you to meditate. You may interpret this to mean that you, as the core self, do not want to meditate. It may feel like the mind is against you, and it is. It wants to fulfill its desire to do and think about other things by using the power of your consciousness to its liking. It will want to remember and imagine things. It will want to make determinations and plans. It may urge you to get up. It may influence you to think that meditation is a pointless waste of time. These games the mind plays must be dismissed 
so that consciousness can experience solitude and feel itself, be itself without body and mind reference. The freedom of mental burden and relief we feel even temporarily is proof that even though the mind is resistant, the core self needs time apart from it. Touching upon the core self, getting even a slightly momentary feeling of being that self feels so radiantly pleasurable that once felt will be a beckoning to go back into meditation again and again to visit the self. Knowing that you are not your mind can be a source of motivation to continue making efforts in meditation. Remembering that the body is temporary and won't last forever also pushes us forward in our quest for spiritual insight. So how do we shut down the functions of the mind? Over and over in meditation, check the mind like a teacher with eyes in the back of her head, a portion of the observing self stands guard over the mind. The mind is like a room full of naughty students required to sit still and be quiet. They do not want to. But with a patient, perseverant teacher, their behavior can be transformed. With discipline and compassion, it is absolutely possible. When you realize that the core self has been lured back into mental thoughts, use willpower to retract the energy of consciousness, pulling it out of the thoughts and into the self. Even advanced meditators must perform these simple disciplines. So that's the end of that portion of my book, Kundalini Yoga Home Practice. This is available on Amazon. And if you have any questions or anything that you would like to share in regard to these functions of the mind that Patanjali alerts us to in the Yoga Sutras, please share in the comments section. Thanks for listening and have a good day.